Yo, what is up guys? It's Liz Gaming back with another video and for this video we are going to do it a little bit different than normally So I was planning to do a voiceover for the King Amarukang and the Queen Amarukang dungeons And I would probably have uploaded them separately But I decided to combine these dungeons and give you guys a little uh, sort of a guide um, Including some of the uh, information regarding my Sadida because um, I think this information is pretty uh, interesting and I've got some questions regarding my sets on previous videos. I, I was like, I'm going to share it for this one as well. So for the King and Queen dungeons, the Pandala 3 dungeons, the Sadi is such an insanely good class, guys. So I, I want to show you guys a set that I've put together for the Sadi, especially it is a full uh, agility mp reduction uh, let me show you guys so this is the set that i've been put putting together this uh, is it literally is a set that i've only used on my sadi no other class i've used it so it is a 12 ap 6 mp set five range that's it is that is with the new dofus in my video i have not used the dofus i've used uh, i think i was just using an ice dofus i was playing with a cross so you get range buff anyways but if you have this Dofus on your Sadi, then it's a really, really nice one. The set has a three summons, which is fine. Three and a half thousand initiative, so playing first is not a problem. The, even the resistance is not too bad, except for maybe air, but it's PVM, so it doesn't really matter. Now here is where it gets interesting. It has 883 agility, and even I have, a, I have 900 on my set because I have some... 20 agility um transcendence runes on i think one of the uh, lunar items 600 strength and almost 500 power so that's basically 1300 agility 1100 uh, strength so that's insane and on top of that i have 220 mp reduction this set on a sadi is broken guys it is really insane as you will be seeing in the video soon so it is a full Lunar set which has been buffed, 100 power, 1000 initiative range, 30 AP and MP reduction. Uh, two item, let's go over this one, the Wukang set which is a classic MP reduction set as well. Also strength, agility and then two pieces of the Possessed set which is also 10 MP reduction. Um, AP, MP, EXO and I have like 20 agility on the amulet I think, 20 agility on the boots and then I got some spell damage. Any Wukang items I have with uh, 200 initiative exo because they are from my Enertroph. So that is the Sadi set. Now let's go over the video and I'll explain you guys how I'm going to be using this for the dungeon. Alright, now let's jump into the dungeon. And the special achievement for both of the dungeons, it is the same thing. It is not allowed for any of the enemy summons to be alive as well as the summon that's your ally. And the allied summon has to be killed by your team. If it's killed by any of the enemies, it will fail the special achievement. So I had to run this dungeon a couple of times because I miscalculated. Uh, I basically put the summon in the enemy team's face and like it got killed. So keep that in mind. Don't put the enemy. Don't put the summon in the enemy's face. So. Uh, I'm running with the Kra, uh, Sadi and Fekka. Um, as I explained before, the Fekka has the uh, set that I've just shared, uh, which is MP reduction, mainly agility with a little bit of strength as well. And here I'm, I've got the, um, the summon out. So on turn one, I try to put the enemies like near each other so the Sadi can put the infected state out. And I did do um, twice lashing arrow with the Kra to put erosion on the boss. By doing the erosion, it will lower the maximum HP. So reaching the next threshold will be easier then. So, um, all I did during this fight is it's not too bad. Like, this fight is so easy if you are running with a Sadi with this MP reduction set. So, uh, my panda is going to, like, uh, get the uh, king summon, like, close to the enemy so it can do a lot of damage. Meanwhile, the Sadi is putting the enemies in the infected state so it can do tons of damage and MP reduction. The Kraw will do a lot of damage as well. Uh, I am playing with Exploding Arrow as I've shared in one of my last videos where I shared the insane 
cross uh, damage that I had with the exploding arrow. You can put it on enemies. It does like AoE around every single enemy and you can cast it on the new summon as well. So having that in this dungeon is pretty insane. So this turn I got the uh, I got two of the summons out on the field. Now I keep in mind um, the summons you have to kill them within two turns or the enemy will return to its uh, previous state. You have to repeat the entire process so keep that in mind. Now um, ex I'm sorry guys but I am going to play in creature mode during this fight because of all the summons it's kind of like um, hard to see where the enemies are. Now a nice way to remember when you have to kill the king summon and for the other dungeon the queen summon of course is the turn you um, spawn the summon so for me it was I think it was turn one and the boss will leave the lotus state on turn six so it's five turns later it's always five turns so that means that I need to kill the summon a turn before so in this case turn five I think I will do here in a second. I just try to use the summon a little bit. I think I'm going to kill it with my craw here. Keep in mind, no, some classes have a lot of spells these days that don't deal damage on allies. So make sure you pick some of the spells that actually deal damage on allies. Because spells like Magic Arrow and Retreat Arrow, they don't even do damage on allies anymore. So it, it can be tricky. So here I'm also, um, you see that one mob that is really, really close to the HP threshold. I need to make sure that I don't deal damage on it because um, I think, I mean, after the boss leaves the Lotus stage, you can, of course, do damage. But don't get a, um, like, oh, at least a turn before the boss uh, leaves the Lotus state. Don't reach a threshold with one of the mobs because you will not be able to kill it before the boss leaves the Lotus state. And then you will fail the special achievement. So... It is really important to do that. So you can see here that I got the summon out, which I'm going to kill next turn. Even though the boss is out of the Lotus state, it doesn't matter. Because the only thing that matters is the turn the boss leaves the Lotus state. None of these summons can be alive. So um, this makes it a little bit easier. Look at this damage that the Sadi did and the MP reduction. I got all of the enemies into the um, infected state. The agility spells have really nice damage with this 1300 agility set. With 220 MP reduction, it is very easy to get the enemies to like 1 MP or even 0 MP. They don't move. If they stay like in between, like next to each other, even the Kra can do a ton of damage, which is really, really nice. So the boss is quite far away. So I'm here, I'm going to do another, like tons of damage with the Sadi. It's insane. Um... My Kra does not really have line of sight on the boss. So here I just decided to... Um, I actually had line of sight. So I moved to the left. So the reason what I did is... Um, I threw the boss away with my uh, panda. That way that if the boss leaves the uh, lotus state... It will at least be far away. It will not be able to hit my team for the turn. So uh, here you can see me right down in the chat. 8 plus 5 is 13. Which means that on turn 8 I spawn the summon. 5 turns later is turn 13. So turn 13 the boss will leave the lotus state. Which means that I have to kill the summon on turn 12. Now for myself I did have to write that down in the chat. Because uh, the first time I ran this dungeon it took me a couple of times. Because I kept forgetting which turn I actually spawned the summon. So that's why I wrote it down. So if you, if you are like a person that keeps forgetting this kind of stuff. Just write down in the chat. It, the difference is 5 turns, so 8 plus 5, 13, very easy. So, the first wave is gone. Um, so here I'm trying to kill the second wave and the third wave already spawned. Keep in mind, this dungeon only has 3 waves instead of the regular 5 waves of normal dimensional dungeons. This is the only exception. So here, look at the amount of enemies that are in the infected state. All of them are like getting MP reduced to 0 and... Uh, Sadi now has two of the inflatable dolls out as well. So even healing and MP buffing is really nice. Like, guys, for those of you who have been following my channel for a long time, you know that I never play Sadi. Like, I literally class change one of my uh, alt characters that I have not even been using. I class change it to a Sadi just for the purpose of these two dungeons. And I don't regret it at all. Like... 
Uh, I know Mr. Black loves this dungeon. I've watched him guide single malt through this dungeon. And even with his uh, Sadi as well, like the MP reduction, it's insane. Like, okay, um, let's go back to the fight. So here I've got two of the enemy summons spawned. One of them was already close to dying. Um, next turn, so it's turn 11 now. So next turn I have to kill the summon. Last turn I also do did do the um, range invulnerability. I tried to keep the range invulnerability until the third wave spawn because the amount of enemies that are on the map right now if one of the enemies like swaps with the king summon and then it gets into the enemy's face they can blitz it in one turn and it's really annoying that if you play this fight for 20 minutes the summon gets one turn so i tried to avoid it by doing a range in vulnerability um so yeah here i've got the infected state again there's one agility spell that um spreads the infected state onto nearby um enemies in like a two cell radius and then you have the um poisonous spell the intelligence one that can put the infected state as well so this turn i had to kill the uh king summon so that way i was not able to look that one guy i almost failed the achievement there because i hit it and it was like so close to reaching the threshold uh, I was a little bit lucky there because I again I think I forgot but I was lucky look at uh, how close all of the enemies are near each other and I just put the balls in the infected state I do one of the agility spells that does like minus 2 MP then I do the minus 4 MP spell and I even have the ultra powerful doll that even does more MP reduction crowd will do some erosion and then hit the boss again so the enemies they can't do anything look at them they have like one mp or they just passed their turn all i need to do now is like check my sadie which enemies are in the affected state which are not and then here i'm just like mm, i can look at the damage like i think there's nothing more to explain just look at it and i even figured out later that the manifold uh, bramble spell the strength one also does mp reduction so it is only MP reduction, MP reduction, and with this set that I've showed you guys in the beginning of this video, you can do a ton of damage while doing the massive MP reduction. Um, I think it wasn't too long after this fight, a guild mate of mine needed help with one of the fights for um, the Bonta alignment quest. I think it was Kutan, uh, where you have to do three wave of a three rooms and the final room all of the enemies had um damage sharing and uh, a lot of them had reflect damage so what i did there is um i helped him out with my sadi on turn one i did put as many of the enemies into the infected state and i used my entire team so my mask my kra everything to fully buff my sadi then on turn two I did a range invulnerability on the Sadi, so I didn't take the damage reflect. And then I just one shot it due to the infected state and then damage sharing that they had. I one shot the entire map on turn two, and only the boss was left. And we killed that in like one or two turns. So even for certain quest fights or other dungeons, the, the this Sadi set is insane. So here the boss. Um, is back into the uh, lotus state so i can just finish off the enemies and so i wrote down again uh, turn 15 plus 5 is turn 20 i need to kill the summon on turn 19 which is easy there's only like four enemies left one of them is already turned so yeah like i said this is so easy with a sadie the enemies don't even get past the um the the, the, the spot that they spawn at so if uh, I will actually link the set uh, in the description below so you guys can check that out. If you guys have any questions regarding uh, either of these fights or any of the previous videos that I've uploaded over the past weeks, let me know in the comments below. Uh, also, I, I do plan to make a guide on how to multi account because I got a lot of questions how do I, how I swap between characters. And I'm not using any third-party program. I'm not, I'm not using auto hotkey. Um, but there are simple ways how you can make it a lot easier for you guys. So, And a lot of people apparently don't know about these simple things. So I might just make a quick video tutorial on that. 
And then next week, I will start with the uploading of the Iron Man videos. I just need some time to edit them because I've got like five videos ready for you guys. Um, and they just need to be edited. I need to put like a voiceover and then I can upload them for you guys. So, but I also want to do some more streaming. Um, but the thing is that the reason why I'm not streaming um, lately, except for the podcast, of course, is because I can't stream the Iron Man team because that will spoil the video. So, for example, I will in one of the videos, I will show you guys the progress of my equipment and all that kind of stuff, the starter dungeons and quests. But I'm, I've already passed that. Like, I'm already subbed with the team right now. So I don't want to spoil and do a live stream with the team right now before the videos are up to date. So I'm trying to edit them as fast as possible and upload them as soon as they are ready so that... If I'm up to date with the videos, I can actually do some live streams as well. And perhaps I'm even going to go and stream on Twitch. So here I'm going to do the King dungeon. And then you have to you have the Queen summon, of course. I do find this dungeon a lot easier than the other one. Um, because the Queen summon that you get uh, to control, that one can hit from range. And the King Summon only had like 4 range, so it has to be in the, in the enemy's face, so it's a little bit annoying. So here, as you see, I put the um, Infected State on the boss, and I do the Agility spell that spreads it to the other enemies. It's just so nice. So I'm gonna end the voice over here, and I'm gonna, just gonna let you guys watch the rest of the video. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Hit this video up with a like. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye.